Hey everyone, Diavolo here, and in today's video, we are finally going to be going over the conclusion of Kometsu no Yaiba and the future that Tanjiro along with everyone from the Demon Slayer Corps fought for for over 1,000 long and brutal years. So just before we jump into today's video, if you are near and here, then do make sure you hit that subscribe button and also be sure to leave a like on the video. As well, I honestly really need it after the absolute storm that hit my channel over the past few days, if you guys haven't noticed, and it would help me out more than you could possibly imagine with pushing my content back into YouTube's algorithm. But anyway, enough of that, let's get straight into the finale of this beautiful and serene series that is Demon Slayer. As time flies forward from the small hut that Tanjiro, Nezuko, Zenitsu and Inosuke lived in, we see a large, modern city, three generations in the future. Kanata Kamado, who resembles Kano in appearance, is the great-great-grandson of Tanjiro and Kano, and the eldest son of the Kamado family. As he tries to wake his younger brother, Sumihiko, up, who almost looks exactly like a younger Tanjiro, he tells him that he will be late for school. However, Sumihiko sleepily responds that he is already up, but Kanata sees that he is barely awake, and leaves for school on his own, leaving Sumihiko to deal with waking up himself. Over at the future Agatsuma household, Yoshitero reads The Legend of Zenitsu, a supposed autobiography of his great-grandfather Zenitsu Agatsuma, and cries when he reaches the part where the defeated Muzan Kabatsuji. Suddenly, his sister Toko, who resembles their great-grandmother Nezuko, kicks Yoshitero in the back and tells him to stop reading their great-grandfather's novel of lies, and to focus on his study as his grades had been unruly low. He objects to being sent to go study, but Toko twists his ear and tells him that the Demon Slayer studied too, which she uses in a way to trick him into following suit. With the two also only being great-grandchildren, this proves the fact that both Zenitsu and Nezuko lived long lives together, as Zenitsu himself never achieved the Demon Slayer mark, and thus would have not died before the age of 25. As the two of them make their way to school together, Yoshiteru thinks to himself how the other women in his family were all quiet and polite, but Toko was nothing like them. With an annoyed expression, he asked Toko if she believed in reincarnation, and she merely snapped at him, asking what he was making such an expression for. Yoshiteru then said, While something like that was hard to prove conclusively, it was his belief that everyone who had died while fighting the demons for a peaceful world had found some kind of path to happiness. Toko ignores him and looks at the news alert on her phone with admiration, which declares Clears that an athlete called Tenma Uzui had won a gold medal in gymnastics for Japan at only 20 years of age, taking his ancestor Tenkin Uzui's appearance into style and physique. Yoshiteru says that Tenma was a rude and nasty person, but Toko defends him and says that it was truly possible to get away with anything if one was as good looking and of course as flashy as he is. Another news story catches Yoshiteru's eye and he snatches Toko's phone from her, much to her irritation. He opens the story about a beautiful looking botanist called Aoba Hashibera, who had discovered a rare flower called the Blue Spider Lily. Aoba is the great grandson of Inosuke Hashibera and Aoi Kanzaki, who also would have lived long fulfilling lives together just like Zenitsu and Nezuko. It also reveals the true reasoning behind why Muzen would have never been able to achieve his goal of finding the Blue Spider Lily, as it was an extremely rare plant that only bloomed during the day on occasion every few years and for two or three days every year. Year, making it near impossible for Muzan to achieve his actual goal. Obviously though, we never know and this could have possibly changed if he had formed some kind of relationship with a human who could have searched for it during the day, which thankfully never happened though. Sadly though, in the future, Aoba had come under intense criticism following a mistake in their handling of the lilies, which caused them all to wither, and he was forced to apologize at a press conference. Yoshiteru denounces this attitude towards such a stunning and beautiful woman, but Toko corrects him and tells him that Aoba is in fact a man, much to his shock and disgust. As the two continued onward, they encountered a woman pushing two strollers with twin children in them. They were wrapped in nice, mist padded blankets and had black hair reminiscent of the Tokito twins, Muchiro and Yuchiro. Yoshitiro, taking on the personality of Zenitsu, asked if they were girls or not, and Toko said he was creepy, to which he cried out and declared that he was not creepy at all. The two then pass a pair of female students and Yoshitiro immediately recognizes that they are from the nearby Sakurai Women's Academy, with the two students having an exact likeness to that of Kane Kocho and Shinobu. Toko looks at her brother with extreme disappointment, but is quickly distracted when she spots Kanata. She eagerly runs over to tell him he looked cute, with Kanata returning the compliment to her delight. 
Joshi Theru mutters that he had been learning how to cast curses and says that they should watch out, but Toku angrily tells him to repeat himself and what she quickly apologizes as his voice begins to tremble. They then cross next to the kindergarten and Yoshi Teru stares at the teacher, who happens to look exactly like Gyome, but also notes that he looked funny in his pink apron. Toko asks Kanada if he wants to go with her to a certain diner on their way home. Kanada asks if she meant the one with the snake decor and the giant serving sizes, to which Toko confirms and Kanada responds that he is unsure if he could ever show his face there again. He shares the story of when he was last at that store with Yoshiteru. The boy had been completely transfixed with the woman's chest who had worked there. Obviously, this woman just happened to resemble the voluptuous Mitsuri. Her husband, who also worked in the store, got mad and had thrown a knife at him. And of course, he looked like no one other than Obanai also finally fulfilling the wish that the two had made on their deathbeds. Toko turns around to Yoshiteru in disgust and rage as the boy stammers, claiming that this was a false accusation and that he was not looking at her chest. Back at the Kamado household, Sumihiko finally wakes up and notices that he was running late, wondering why no one had come in and woken him up. He then gets ready for school and dives out of his window to the bottom of their apartment and sprints for his school. On his way, he passes a house with two elderly men playing shogi. They bear a resemblance and wear robes similar to that of Sakonji and Jigoro's. They yell out at Sumihiko, asking him why he did this every morning. Meanwhile, on the old men's television, a news report began about an Ubiyashiki who had set the record for the eldest living Japanese person. This Ubiyashiki is actually Kuraya, meaning that over a century after Muzan's defeat, Kuraya is still alive and the oldest living person in Japan, being at least 108 years old. The fact that he lived so long is amazing proof that the illness which previously cursed their family is now long gone with Muzan. When Kara first learns about the curse being broken, he didn't believe it, but as he grew past the age of 20 and then 30, it cemented to him that the curse was truly gone. This made him cry for hours alongside his wife, children and sisters. Sumihiko continues racing, and while running, he runs past a store called Haganezuka Maintenance and three girls who recognize him as the running man. These girls all closely resemble Sumi, Kiyo, and Naho. As Sumihiko arrives at a traffic light that had just gone green, he attempts to jump over the hood of a police car to avoid having to stop which startles the policeman inside, who both look like the brothers Sanemi and Genya. The policeman resembling Genya is actually his descendant and is incensed and believes that Sumihiko must be the one they have had seven reports of. They attempt to chase after him, but Sumihiko dashes off even faster. He crosses a group of three children, bearing a resemblance to our boy Giyu Tomioka and his best friends Sabito and Makomo. The boy resembling Tomioka is named Gichi and is a confirmed descendant of Giyu's, probably a great great grandson just like Sumihiko is of Tanjiro. The boys have some rare toys which are shaped like the masks once made by Sakonji for his pupils. The girl says she has spent all her allowance, luckily though they give her one of theirs so that she can have one as well. At the school, Yoshitero watches as a boy named Goto looks at his phone at an image of a beautiful woman who looks just like Tamiyo. Yoshitero interrupts the boy and his friend says that he recognizes that as one of the paintings of Yushiro Yamamoto, which is obviously the only remaining demon alive, Yushiro, who has followed through with Tanjiro's last wishes to him and kept the memory of Tamiyo alive through the paintings of her. In the future, Yoshiro had begun to receive acclaim throughout the world for his paintings of Tamiyo, which were said to be like photographs. Yoshitero notes that Yushiro would attempt to shoot at any reporters who came to ask him questions but mentions that his first love was number 812 Tamiyo with dark blue flowers. He then walks off, leaving the two boys bewildered at him and his personality. Sumihiko continues to run and is joined by Tojuro, one of the descendants from Rengoku's bloodline. Tojuro even resembles Kyojuro specifically with his fiery hair. Greeting the boy, Sumihiko says that it's unusual for him to be late, and Tojuro explains that he woke up at 4am but got absorbed into his training throughout the morning. He says that he couldn't hear anything until his father whacked him. Suddenly, the police car from before draws nearer to the boys, pestering Sumihiko for him to stop. Tojuro tells Sumihiko that he should get into a sport, but he responds that it would just cut into his sleeping time. Tojuro is adamant though that he would be great at whatever sport he picked. They keep running, even as police keep up their chase with them in their car. The police are screaming at them to stop as they arrive at their high school, where a teacher, who looks just like the Demon Slayer Corps member Murata, asks for the gate to be closed as soon as he sees Sumihiko. 
The person at the gate says that there are still three minutes before it should close, but the teacher insists that Sumihiko is a habitual offender. As the gate begins to shut, Sumihiko says that he believes they will make it in time and Tojuro agrees. Both of them glide over the gate and land inside of the school, running for their classes. The police car comes to a screeching halt and the officer, looking like Sanemi, walks over to the gate and tells the teacher that they need to talk. Aoba sits on a bench in the park and notes how it is a quiet day, saying he wishes he could live a quiet life alone in the mountains. Back at the Kamado residence, Sumihiko's mother receives a phone call and is told of her son's doing, being highly surprised and apologizing for the trouble her son had caused. Next to her, on the wall, we see a katana that is actually Tanjiro's black Naturan blade, with Kyojuro's flame hilt still attached. Just above the blade hang some photographs and an old yellowing picture of all of those who would survive the battle against Muzan, smiling happily together, and the two Hanafuda earrings of Yuroichi Tsukiguni hanging right next to them as this series finally comes to its end. Well, this ending was just too good, and honestly I love to see uh, that evidence of a future in any kind of series that I finish, so the fact that we get to see every single descendant of pretty much every character of importance throughout this story is something that is honestly really awesome, and I wish a lot of other mangas or mangaka followed in a similar path, and we got to see like the descendants or that, that future bloodline of certain characters and stuff like that, as it's just a heartfelt thing that I think a lot of people like to see. But obviously that's just in a personal opinion as well, and as someone who's always loved world building, I just love to obviously get that evidence of a future and actually meet the characters and the fact that we do get their names is just even more fantastic. Like honestly I'm going to continue gushing over the series here for a second but the fact like I find it awesome how Aoba kept the feminine look of Inosuke or how like the descendant of Zenitsu uh, was still creepy and weird just like Zenitsu was when he was younger as well. And like this chapter here was just one of those chapters where you constantly have a smile on your face the entire time as you read throughout it and you get all the little hints from throughout the story that have been added into this chapter here into these descendants of each character and honestly i would have loved to know if tanjiro or anyone else who would unlock the demon slayer mark managed to live past the age of 25 obviously i'm assuming that they didn't because we know that there's a difference between the great great grandparents and the great grandparents so there's probably some kind of obvious age difference between the Agatsuma and the Kamado families there. I've absolutely loved making these Demon Slayer videos over the past like two or three months now so I am working to get all of them back uh, hopefully over the next two or three months uh, but it's just going to take time sadly. If you guys want more info on that um, then feel free to check out my latest video which I will leave a link to down below in the description and or join my discord and follow my twitter where I honestly just probably will keep you a little bit more up to date than updating you guys on my YouTube as I find I'm just going to continue with what I was doing and not worry about it too much and just keep pursuing and over time those videos will come back and also as well those videos are going to all be up on Patreon I'm uploading them onto a different platform so that they're available up on there um, I already have the majority of them up live it's just I have to get the other few ones up before I can release them there for you guys but anyway, if you guys are new around here and want to keep up to date with like the latest anime story explain videos and just other anime videos in general, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and also make sure you leave a like on the video as it'll really help with pushing my stuff back into YouTube's algorithm after what has just happened. But anyway, enough of that. For now, it's been your professional degenerate Diabolo and I will see you all in a bit. Bye.